to have you with us this morning. Last week, we had our partners from XM Bank speaking on the topic of direct and indirect exporting. Today, we're delighted to have our colleagues from the U.S. Commercial Service Division informing us about leveraging export resources. I'm so excited about this one. So let me go over a few housekeeping rules and then we'll jump right in. All attendees will be muted. Only the panelists will be able to speak. We encourage you to type your questions into the chat as you think of them, as the last few moments of this webinar will be reserved for Q&A. And I guarantee you, you'll have quite a few questions after hearing from our uh, export experts this morning. So please also keep in mind that if you register and attend all five of our virtual sessions, uh, you will be invited to our in-person export panel and certificate ceremony on October 10th. So you wanna register and attend all five virtual sessions so that you get that uh, in-person invitation. Now, please help me virtually welcome my team, starting with our program coordinator, Ms. Jessica Vasquez, and of course, our two business advisors, Ms. Deidre Sutton and Ms. Tanya McGilbra. Our export experts this morning are Mr. Jason Wilson, who serves as the director for the U.S. Commercial Service Houston, and Mr. Brent Klepko, who also serves as Senior International Trade Specialist, again, for U.S. Commercial Service Houston. So, Jason, take it away. Uh, great. Thank you, Marchette. Uh, we're excited to be here today, and uh, no doubt you had a good presentation last week from Exim Bank. Uh, we work closely with them and many of the partners you have in this series, so uh, please know that when you're thinking about exporting and trade, you can start with them or us, but either way, you have a great ecosystem here to work with. Um, also, MBDA Business Center has been a great partner for the U.S. Commercial Service, so really just an additional thanks to you, not just for this series, but other events that we collaborate on uh, during the year. Um, today, what I would like to do is just share a little bit about uh, market uh, data, some trade data, and, and how strong Houston is in that regard, and then introduce uh, my colleague here, Brent Klepko, on the CS Houston team, who's prepared a presentation for us. So, a couple things that are obvious, um, but they're they're important to restate. I just want to share it just for all of us as a point of inspiration. But Houston is the number one export market in the country. 176 billion in exports last year. We have two international airports with 66 nonstop international flights. Port Houston is the largest container port on the Gulf Coast. And there's more than 5,000 companies doing business abroad. All this to say. We are really starting off at a point of great uh, competitive advantage to be based here in Houston, thinking about global business and doing business related to exporting and trade. We're the fifth largest city, but most importantly, at least I think anyway, also the most diverse city, uh, most diverse metropolitan area in the country as well. And data shows uh, diversity is a real economic driver and a competitive advantage for regions uh, to develop uh, their economy and ultimately create jobs tied to exporting and trade. At the U.S. Commercial Service, uh, the number one outreach priority for us is the Global Diversity Export Initiative. That means that we are focused on assisting minority business enterprises, uh, women, veteran, and LGBTQ-owned businesses, as well as companies located in rural communities. So um, these are uh, the areas that we focus on, as well as um, important for you all to know that we work with companies of all sizes and we cover all sectors. So don't think to yourself, oh, I'm not sure if my business or my profile or my interest is a fit for the U.S. Commercial Service. You fit right into what we do because we will help everyone and we have uh, programs and services to support you. The U.S. Commercial Service team in Houston is uh, four senior international trade specialists. Uh, today, we're fortunate to have Brent Klepko and he's gonna share with us a little bit more detail on our services, how we work together, and include a little bit there, I believe, on the Texas Step Grants, which is some assistance I think that you all might find very interesting. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Brent. Please take it away. Hey, thank you very much. And I also wanna thank M MBDA for what you're doing. Uh, Jason and our whole U.S. Commercial Service, we really are, we've been doing it for years, but um, GDEI and working with those companies and businesses that may not have the resources or even the experience is a huge priority for us. And this is one of the events that we do to help educate and work in the market. So we're thankful to Marchette and her whole team. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you. So good morning, 
everybody. And uh, this is a little, it's not the longest presentation. And the good news is Marchette will be able to share the presentation with you afterwards. So this way you can kind of relax, listen, take the big picture items, and then you can probably dive deeper into it afterwards. And I say this often, if you can only remember one thing from today is remember trade.gov. Because there, when you go to that website, you'll be able to get a plethora of information that will help you. We're here to assist you. And at the end of the presentation, you'll have our contact information and uh, we're here to help you. So why don't I just start off and initially what's going to happen is the presentation will be an outline of the U.S. Commercial Service, which we're part of the U.S. Department of Commerce. But our immediate subset is we're a part of the International Trade Administration, i.e. the U.S. Commercial Service. So we have a pretty long title, but bottom line is we're here to help you grow your exports. Second points we'll go over are a few. Why do exports matter? What is what are exports? Why do I need to worry about it? And some background. And then I'll finally close out with proof of our exports, proof of exports, some examples of businesses, examples of success of what we're doing internationally. And just to know, I'll get to this slide later on, but you basically will have the entire US embassy and consulates around the world at your disposal to include your local CS office, whether you're in Houston or San Antonio or Chicago, wherever you may be, there's someone locally in our organization to assist you. Now, if you're in a small rural community, we still have people there for you. So don't worry where you're located. As long as you have the interweb, as my mom called it, you were in good shape. So why don't I start off with the presentation? This is our outline. The first section, I'm going to be talking about these four main points, export counseling, market intelligence, business matchmaking, commercial diplomacy, and advocacy. This is our bread and butter, the U.S. Commercial Service. Next slide, please. So this is what I was just talking about, our global presence. So a lot of times I know when I've been going into something new, I may be a little bit nervous. Do I have teamwork? Where's my support? whether it's personally or professionally, we're all human. And this is something I wanna share with you because you're not alone. You have a global presence at your reach now, and that's comforting. And I, I, to me it is, and I know businesses appreciate it. If you can look at the map, you can see all of where we're here to help you grow internationally. And uh, that's a really cool thing. As you can see, we have 106 US offices and then 127 foreign locations and 80 markets. So there's no excuse if you wanna go someplace. And if we don't have a presence there, the US State Department has economic officers like ourselves. So that's where we're at. And uh, I just want you to know that you have a huge network backbone, backbone to support you. Uh, next, please. Export counseling. This is what we do great. One of the things we do great, as you can see, international business development and e-commerce innovation lab. Our international business development, our role is to assist you when you reach out via email or a call, is to provide you all of our knowledge and guidance. You don't have to be an expert. And I just, I just want you to remember that, and you can't get the second base until you get the first base. And that's why I'm, I bring this up is don't worry about hitting a home run. Just come to the plate and talk to us and we can begin the conversation. And that's what our job is, is to counsel and to help guide and shape you. Once again, we're a support network for you. And that includes the MBDA and other government organizations on export. So you, it's a really cool thing in my humble opinion that, you know, we're the good guys and girls in government. You know, we're here to help, and and I, please remember that. We have an e-commerce innovation lab, which is really super important in today's technology. Um, and what this lab will do is we work with local companies to see how does their website show up internationally? What are they lacking on their their e-channels, their online presence? What, can, what could they do better to maybe help improve their potential. 
So it's once again, you don't have to be an expert. That's our jobs. But if you would like to see, for instance, we do something called a, a website globalization report where we get your website and we work through it to see what the kinks are, where you need to improve, what you're doing well. So just remember that in today's society, everybody's got a phone, a laptop, a tablet. And if you're in Saudi Arabia, your website's gonna look different if you're in America. If you're in Ghana, it's gonna look different than if you're in America. You have all these different operating systems, Android, who knows, there's so many. And our job is to try and find and make your website compatible. So that's uh, an important thing to remember. Next slide, please. Market intelligence. You may say to yourself, I don't know where to, where to go. I don't know what to do. I don't know where I wanna send my products or my services. Because that's what we do. Our job is to help you export your goods, whether it's a physical item or your services. If you're an engineer and you have, you're an architect or if you're a consultant in, in any, for, any forum. So what you would wanna do is on our website, trade.gov, we have a huge banner that says market intelligence, very self-explanatory. So we have four main points. We have country commercial guides, and as you can see here, there are amazing guides put together by the U.S. State Department and the U.S. Commercial Service, and we're able to provide you background for over 125 countries. That's pretty cool. You want to know about doing business in South Africa? We have a commercial guide that goes from shipping and logistics all the way down to political possibilities or concerns, it's really a great resource tool. And then say you may say, Brent, we have a, a great product, but we're not sure if Brazil needs it. Because as we all know, say you're selling blue pens. Well, Brazil may already have blue pens. You know, that's just an, a very basic example. And what we'll do for you through our embassies and our consulates is we'll work with you and then we'll do the market research in our in those markets. That's fantastic. It saves you a lot of time. So this is all stacking up about market intelligence, country guides, market research. And then after you've gotten some market research or you've done it on your own and you think, Brent, we <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. If you think Brent. I think Guatemala would be a great place for, we're an architectural firm. We th we've done some research and we would like to find out if there's a need for our type of architectural design firm. Well, we would do an initial market check. We would work with you and we would go down to our consulate and say, we would provide them your marketing materials, all your basic information, a company questionnaire we ask you to fill out because we need to let our people overseas know about your company. So it's definitely a two way street. One of us can't be dancing and the other one's sitting on the sidelines. So if we work with you doing the tango, you have to, you have to work with us. That's the only thing we ask is don't, don't wait six months to respond. Um, and then we have something called an international company profile. You may say, Brent, we have a firm in Japan that's really eager to work with us, but we're a little concerned about if they're for real, is it an AI company, is it scam, et cetera. So what we do is we provide two types of due diligence reports. One's a partial, where we'll reach out to our embassy and say, give them a report about what you're doing, what you want, who the company is. And they may immediately say, oh, we know this company, they're fantastic. Or they may say, we don't know much about it, and we'll do a partial profile where it's general good basic information. But say you're going to be doing a big deal, or even a big deal to your company size. 10,000 may be a big deal to a small company, but we also do the billion dollar stuff. But those huge companies, they generally have a huge worldwide network. So we're really focused on small and medium enterprises because 
that's really where we see a need domestically. And the full report will go into credit worthiness. We'll do interviews with the C executives. It's a really detailed report. So that's market intelligence. That's number one. Let's go to the next slide, please. Business matchmaking. Self what do we, what does that mean? Sally is sitting in Houston. We've already connected. We know what her goals are and she wants to, she wants to connect with some people in France. Well, that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. You know, any, anything we do alone, but when you work with us, we have something called, we have four, we have many services, but on the business matchmaking, we can do one single company promotion where you may say, I would like to go to France, go to one of the consulates and put on a presentation for French businesses that have shown an interest in our products. So our embassy will work with you and us and we'll host either a small event at a hotel room, a bigger event, maybe at the embassy, and we'll connect you with these French businesses and you can promote your business through a seminar, a luncheon, a reception, et cetera. Our direct email campaigns, which I really like. International partner search. Sally knows that France, giving you an example, she knows that they have a, a demand for her product. She knows that there's a market for the product, but now she needs someone locally because of French rules. A lot of countries will demand you have a local partner. I'm not, France isn't necessarily like that, but we'll just stay on France. We'll help you connect to find partners. That's a really fantastic opportunity for you to grow. And there's more details, but I want you, this is a 50,000 foot level. You can always go to our trade.gov and go and just follow the, the tabs. It's a really easy, it's a very easy website, but just like I was talking about doing the tango, it takes a little bit of homework on the client, the company side. So spend some time on our website when you get an opportunity. We can list you in a directory of our overseas U.S. commercial services and our featured U.S. export listing, where we put your information in a local repository and those countries, those local companies can find you what they're looking. And then we also have a business service provider listing. It's an online program to support you. It's just, just a really fantastic process. Now, our one of our star programs is called the Gold Key Service. And this is where Sally decides she wants to travel to France after we've done all this preparatory work. And we'll do up to five or six pre-screened appointments, meaning the company in France and you and Sally have decided to move forward on a, on a serious conversation. So when they, they'll travel to France, we'll coordinate it. It's like a VIP. We treat you like a really, a, you know, king or a queen. And, and we help guide you while you're in country. So we're there to support you. Once you get, once again, we're the backbone. We're here to help you. Next slide, please. You think of us, International Trade Event uh, Administration, U.S. Commercial Service. One of the things we do fantastically is we have trade events around the world and domestically. We do certified trade missions where we'll get a select group of U.S. companies. We'll fly together in a big delegation to a country and we'll do and we'll have briefings and meetings, trade shows. We have trade shows that either we put on or we participate in. We may have a U.S. pavilion. So that's another area. If you if you go to trade shows already, you should please work with us because our brand, the U.S. brand internationally, I remember growing up, Japan and Germany were like the kings of imports. You know, they, everybody knew Germany and Japan made great products. Well, the U.S., our brand now is really high level because when they see the U.S., they know we have laws, regulations, we have judiciary support. Um, it's a really, we have a great brand. 
international trade fairs, as I discussed, a U.S. pavilion, to be under the umbrella of the U.S. flag when you're internationally. Think about it if you're a local company in Switzerland and all of a sudden you see this pavilion, you know the companies that showed up under that U.S. pavilion are probably pretty legit. So that's a great, that's a great tool if you go to trade shows. Next slide, please. Commercial diplomacy. Sally is having problems getting her goods through the customs and border in Chile. Some local agent in Chile is having a bad day and just decides to hold up all of her goods for no reason. That's a very basic example where we can help assist with your with you on these type of disputes. Say it's a bigger issue where a local US company has won a tender but then the government or the company in that market decides to change the rules. That's an unfair trade practice. And we have rules that we coordinate with other countries. So for instance, if India offers a tender and then they change the rules after you've won the tender and they change it so a foreign company wins it, that's where we can get involved. So we'd love to talk to you more about this. Next slide, please. Now we're gonna to go to the second section. So we're flowing pretty fast, and but don't sweat it. Like I said earlier, Marchette has your back and she'll email the slide, this presentation. Why do exports matter? You know, that's a very normal thought. I have a good market domestically, I'm selling, I'm growing. The way I look at it is nothing's perfect. If your domestic sales go down, what are you gonna do? Say there's a world, a domestic global economic failure in the US. Well, you wanna be able to have some backup and maybe your exports will pick up some of those slack. Because as you can see here, 70% of the world's purchasing power is not here. So it's a, that, that's why it matters because it's, it's a really smart business move to help protect you. Because I know from my private practice and then working with government, risk management, being able to secure, help safely, you know, as best as you can, your business, having some exports can help secure that. Next slide, please. Opportunity. We only generate 11% and people may say, that's crazy. Look at these other markets. Well, we're the biggest economy in the world. So if you're trying to sell and you're in the U.S., we're the Rolls Royce of sales, consumption. So I, I don't blame Americans for not necessarily going overseas because we have the most amount of economic possibilities in this country. But if you look at other markets, they're exporting a lot of it's to the U.S. and China, obviously. But we can do better as a country. And that's what we're asking you for is opportunity to help not just your, your business, which is most important, but also help safely secure the U.S.'s economic future. Every little small bit helps. And that's why, for instance, Marsha and her, they do a really good job of reaching out to those that may not have a lot of connections. And why is that? Because we want them to grow. Because when they grow, they help the U.S. out as well and produce tax dollars. So there's opportunity and collectively we're here for you. Next, please. Just like I said, grow US exports to increase jobs. How are we different? Brand, worldwide recognition, global network like I discussed about and results driven, which I'll discuss a bit more later on. But that's, that's why we're here to help create jobs. Next, please. That's a big number. That's probably Marchette's salary, but that's still a big number. So 134 billion exports facilitated by the US Commercial Service. I'm making jokes, Brent. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We all know. So that's a lot of money, $134 billion that the US Commercial Service helped facilitates. And that's spread out throughout the whole country. 
We want to grow that number. Next, please. The number of UX export clients assisted last year. I think that number is a little bigger, but I'll go with the DC folks. 85% of that is small and medium size. Like I said earlier, the big, huge conglomerates, they already have teams. So that's a, that's 32,000. That's a lot of companies and businesses that we assist. Next, please. Think about you as a, I'll talk about me when I've been unemployed or I've had bad times in my life. When I've been able to find a job, it helps me feel better as a human. So you think about 625,000 people now have had their lives changed in some capacity. We want to get that number up because when I've been out of work, for whatever reason, finding a job was important. And if you can find some, increase your own jobs, you can hire someone locally and help change their lives. Next, please. Now, you won't see this number. I know my boss is on the line, my director, but I'm going to say something pretty nice. When often do you see government with a, every dollar appropriated, 360 comes back? That's a great government program, and I'm proud of that efforts. We really do. We really value your money as an organization. So um, I'll just leave it that. I, I'm just very proud of this government agency because we do a good job of valuing your dollar. That wasn't so bad, Jason. So next, please. Now, here we go to the last section. Results for U.S. small businesses. Exporting can be profitable for businesses of all sizes. You have one employee, you have a thousand. Don't sweat it. Just begin the conversation with our office and we can see what we can do to help you. Our Marchette and her team. I said, no, I mean, don't, it's not just us. We'll talk collectively. Maybe someone on the line or our, our team could talk about some other government agencies that we can assist you with. But let's talk about this real quick. Results for U.S. small businesses. Next, please. That's pretty good. $2.2 million. That's the average annual revenue. Now, that doesn't mean we value the $5,000 export and the $50 million export. This is just an average, but it's a lot better than saying $1. So this is pretty good. Next, please. Companies that export grow faster and are less likely to go out of business. I talked about this earlier about risk management. We're not the end all and we don't always provide solutions, but what we are with Marchette, her team, our team is that we're here. You, you know, like I said before, you can't get the second base until you get the first base. And that's what I want you to think about. Don't think about the end result now. Think about just getting to the plate. Next, please. Here are some of our testimonials. I'll just read a couple. And Marchette can share this with you later. I had no idea that such superior service was available to me from a government agency. That's pretty good. It feels as if I have a whole team of support. You do. We're here for you. Thank you. Uh, next, next, please. This is the font. The, uh, it's a little small. I apologize, but you'll be able to read this a bit more in depth. But as you can see, just in Texas. So if you're in Arizona right now or Chicago, uh, we have this also for your your local markets. Over four thousand clients were assisted in Texas. That's a lot. That's a big number, and. If you look at the over 31,000 inquiries were made, that's a lot. People are reaching out, but we want to get that to 70,000. We want 8,000 clients. We don't want 4,000 because it goes back to the, when you grow, you hire people. Next, please. This is something my director, Jason, had mentioned. And this, the state of Texas has something called the STEP program. It's the state trade expansion program. 
There's the website at the bottom that you can click. It's it's uh, it's not the prettiest website at first. Don't worry, but just click it. And as long as you follow the links to get to step, you could just put step in Google. Texas step plan, and you'll find it too if you get lost. But the, what is the purpose of this program? What the state of Texas does through funding from the federal government, the USBA and commerce is our, we give states limited money to help businesses grow their exports. So for instance, the, the program's objectives are to increase the number of small businesses that are exporting. What does that mean? It's an export stipend. The state of Texas will provide up to $10,000 to reimburse you for your export activities as long as they're approved under our the listing. They're pretty long, but for instance, if you use, if you're a business that has an annual revenue, you've had some sales, you're, you're growing and you want to expand internationally, and you want to use one of our services, say, for instance, you use the gold key. There are some fees associated with our services. And maybe if I can ask Jason, if he can maybe talk about that for a second afterwards. But say you spend $1,000 using one of our services. The state of Texas, if you're approved, will reimburse you 75% of that. So your costs are only $250. Or $250. So these are one program that that we have that we're here. They're here to help you. So there are tools, and on this call, I can't answer everything, or I can't discuss everything just because of time. But I don't want you to get weighted down on the information, because that's don't let the end be the fear. Start off with what can I what can I do first. And that's important. What can you do first? Next slide, please. This is our. Our location is we have an office downtown on Smith Street on the 10th floor. Parking is a little bit of an issue, but there's a lot of it around. But you can always call us up and set up an appointment and come in and have face to face. Or we can do an MS teams call. I prefer MS teams. Because it saves time, it's good for the environment, and people that way can just be at their office or home and connect with us face to face without having to worry about our fantastic traffic we have in the Houston area. If you're not in the Houston area, wherever you live, you can just go to our trade.gov, put in your location of your city, our nearest big city, and find this information. You'll see the, my director's information. You'll see my information, and we also have a few other colleagues. So it's kind of a big overview, Marchette. Um, I, I hope this has been helpful, and we're here to help you grow. And the last thing, Jason, for me is I just encourage you to write an outline of what you would like to do, your goals and summary. And don't make perfect be the enemy of the good. You don't have to be perfect now. But just have an outline, reach out to us, and then we can go from there. And I thank you all, and I really thank Marchette, Latanya, Jessica, and our whole team at the MBDA. We're really grateful that what you're doing, and we're also grateful for what the U.S. Commercial Service is doing about outreaching to companies that don't have export experience, companies that may have been on the sidelines for whatever reason, and that the more we can collectively as a gumbo, I'm from New Orleans, as a gumbo that we can grow as a, as a group, as a society, we can uplift everyone. And when that happens, hey, USA. So Jason, thank you, sir. You can take over. Brent, that was great. I really don't have too much to add at this point. And I know we have some good questions in the chat here, um, but overall, I think you did a nice job. and. Um, and I think that maybe, uh, let's see, Marchette, do you want to help us look through some of these questions and we can Absol provide some answers? Absolutely. Uh, first, let me say thank you uh, so much, uh, Jason and Brent. Um, absolutely fantastic presentation. And I think it really spoke to the value um, of MBEs ex in the export industry. 
and the resources and tools that are available to them. So thank you all so much for this. Um, I know uh, Deirdre and Tanya are getting ready to answer or ask you all some of the questions uh, so that you can answer them. So we'll uh, certainly get prepared for that. You all can still, our attendees, you all can still uh, type your questions into the chat as you have them. Um, but uh, Tanya and Deidre, you can go ahead and start now. Okay. Um, let me just restate something that I heard Brent say. Don't make perfect be the enemy of good. And I see this question here. It says, I've only been in business for I don't know how many years, so this may not be for me. Can you speak on that, Brent? Muted. When you say that, what may not be for them exporting? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that's true. That's a valid point. You know, um, the U.S. market is our domestic consumption is the biggest in the world. So a company may not want to need to go ex internationally. We would hope that you would, but um, the most important is. We're here. We're here to help you. You basically, if you work and want to grow internationally, I wouldn't pass up all this assistance because it's there for you. Now, we're not saying we're the end all, but I, I definitely can see companies. Why not spend 5% of the time and focus on an export strategy? And absolutely, you know, that's my thoughts. You know, I'll just add a quick thing there, Brent. That's a great answer. And also. You know, domestic business and global business, it is competitive, right? So what's your advantage? What's your reason for choosing a market or looking internationally? You know, just like opening a coffee shop on Main Street, how are you better than your competitors? So when you're thinking about markets around the world, you want to narrow it down based on uh, a competitive advantage you might have or a reason you might have for doing business in Mexico or Brazil or France or Singapore. So whatever that might be, but you do want to bring some sense of you have a reason and a justification why you think your product and your service is uniquely going to be competitive in that market. Now, it doesn't have to be the perfect answer, like Brent uh, mentioned, but it could be the right first step. And we might find out, you know what, it's not right in Indonesia. Maybe we'll try in Vietnam. But um, anyway, that's just one more thought there about, you know, having a reason to choose your market overseas. I will certainly add very quickly, um, Jason, you mentioned a number in your opening remarks that I thought was certainly worth repeating. Um, and what you said was that last year in 2022, there was $176 billion spent in exporting. So uh, to whomever asked the question about, you know, I've only been in business a small number of years, uh, maybe it's not for me, question mark. Um, it's certainly worth getting the information and talking to um, our colleagues at US Commercial Service to see if in fact they can assist you um, with exporting, you know, it doesn't have to be all oh, that you've been in business 20 years. You know, there's no, you know, limit on how much or how little time you have to have been in business, but have the conversation to see if it's something that will benefit you and your business. And, and last little thing I would just add is it doesn't mean you have to work with us tomorrow. Correct. These six months or six years. This is really an educational opportunity for us for the for for the people who are attending. So um, just have us in your thoughts. I encourage you to go to trade.gov. Maybe something, maybe it sparks something inside of you. But um, we're just we just want this is part of an educational outreach to let you know that we're here. And having said that, is trade.gov kind of a, a guide for doing business abroad? PDF or I'll take that, Jason. So, as we know, when, when people are domestically in business, it takes some effort, obviously, to start a business. There will be some effort that it takes to grow internationally. Now, the U.S. Commercial Services, we have something called Export Ready. And we, we have a conversation with the company to see, do they have domestic sales? Do they have a person, you know, do they, are they a legitimate company? Do they have a legitimate or a service that could possibly be exported? So we'll have this conversation and we won't decide immediately. But if a company doesn't have any domestic sales, there's we wouldn't be able to go internationally because a company's first question overseas is, 
do they have any annual sales domestically? And if they have none, well, the international company, we, we just wouldn't be able to assist. So that's one point. I don't know if Jason wants to add anything. Yeah, thanks, Brent. I'll just that speaks to the you know the competitiveness and can you deliver your good and service? You know, it's, it's more about kind of your background and your ability to understand the logistics, shipping, transportation, the viability of the good and service will arrive in market in good condition, ready for the market. So um, that's something important. And I'll throw in one more thing, Brent, and I'll turn it back to you in a second. Is also remember, you know, Made in the USA is a great brand. We are looking for that fifty one percent U.S. content. Uh, that's a requirement for our assistance. So. The reason we have that U.S. content requirement is that's what ultimately results in creating jobs here in the U.S. So if you're manufacturing your goods here, creating your products, um, then that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, Brent, over and here, to you. And, and Marshad, could you remember this for your team, for the people on the call? Maybe they, you could send this out to them. This is really important. Say you have a small business, but you want some help on how to get trained up on your exports. Now we have some great training videos, et cetera, on our website, but we have local organizations around the country that are there to help you grow. One of them is called SCORE, capital letter, S-C-O-R-E. And SCORE's job, they're all former business people, men and women of all shapes and sizes and colors, and they're retired and they're what they do for a free service is to help train local companies on how to grow domestically and internationally. We can't assist domestically, but internationally we can. But on the training, as long as you go into these, this organization and you call up or you go online and set up an appointment, don't go in thinking, oh, I wanna sell pizza in China. No. <laughs> As long as you go in with some type of plan, I want to grow my exports, but I don't know what to do. They can help you. Another one, Marchette, if you could send to them as well, it's called the SBDCs, Small Business Development Centers. These are also all around the U.S. that you can just put in and find your local one. And what their job is to do, to do is just like SCORE, it's from the SBA and the U.S. Commerce Department is to help train you as well on exporting or even domestic business development. But then we also have Marsha and her team. So when it comes to educational export growth, those organizations are more for companies that are in the infancy. But um, there's lots of resources for you. Um, okay, you know, Brent, you talked about, thank you for bringing up the reimbursement. The next question is, what are the costs associated with trade mission traveling? Um, with the STEP program, please remind me if that is, if the reimbursement is incorporated within that grant. So with the STEP grant, what happened is it's an application process. We have to have businesses that have some type of basic like, if you don't have a business, you're not going to get a step grant. But if you don't have any sales, you won't be able to get a step grant. But if you're a small business with two, three employees and and you're, you're, you have a small little market share and you want to do a trade show in France, what would happen is once you sign, when you sign up on the application and they have step by step, it'll list what are you seeking to kind of do. And you may put under there attend trade shows. And what would happen is the business would have to pay for the service. You know, they have to pay for the trade show. And then when they get back, they would then send their information to the state of Texas if they've been approved. And they would get a reimbursement for 75% of that service. So say it costs three grand to go on these trade on a trade mission for you know whatever services. There's a lot of great information that you can learn on the website, so don't worry about being perfect today. But you have to pay first, then you get reimbursed. Thank you. Okay, um, this is from Sabrina Franklin. Do you help companies with research and development of a product to export?
I can take that one, Brent, and then you can add on if I'm not complete. I mean, I think some of Brent's resources he just shared are the right way to think about that because that's when you're still building your business. We're not quite um, the right agency to begin with if you're not quite sure what your product and your service is. That could be SCORE or Marchette's team, for example, to maybe help you understand your strategy, what your product and service is. Once you have your product and your service um, and or your service, whatever that might be, and perhaps you have some intellectual property uh, that you want to protect and patent, um, that's when you start really becoming a uh, an intriguing partner, uh, potential partner for someone overseas or just directly entering a market without that partnership and maybe also not even related to intellectual property. That was just one example. But um, as far as developing your product and service, um, that's very early um, in the process. And that point, we would say you are an enterprising business, but not quite export ready. And we would probably try to refer you to a partner so you can get your business model together. Perfect. Um, do you need to have an export license? If so, where do you apply for that? Oh, I'll take that, Jason. So on, if you're gonna be, that's where, I, so this is kind of a really early question. So if you're a business that's already has the domestic sales and you're, and you have a, a product that you wanna export, we have the BIS Bureau of Industry and Security and some other government agencies where if you go to trade.gov and you just type in export license, it'll give you all the information. But bottom line is if you're trying to ship an M1 Abrams to another country, you're going to need an export license. If you're going to try to ship agricultural products, you're going to need some type of license with the Department of Ag. So it's a pretty, I can't answer that right. I couldn't answer that on at this level, but we always encourage companies to apply for an export license first to see if they need it. It's always a smart strategy. And if you don't, it'll be something very basic called an EA9, EAR99. It means there's no need for an export license. But that's something that you can just put in our trade.gov website and it'll give you some much more detailed information. Small business that says thank you for sharing all this wonderful information. They are a certified minority woman owned small business, resellers of all kinds of power tools and equipment machinery. Um, we are sorry, the, the cursor jumped on me. <laughs> sorry. Take over. We are interested in finding. Hey international clients and would love to learn more about the Golden Services. They want to confirm if they heard correctly that 75% of the Golden Services service fees uh, will get returned back to them if they find clients abroad through the service. Uh, no, that's not, not accurate, but so the STEP program is a separate entity. And that's an application that you fill out. And then you have these types of export activities that are approved. We offer the gold key irrespective of the step program. And that gold key service is a fee that we are charging. If you put in to our trade.gov and you just put in fees could, because Congress mandates that we have to charge some fees for some of our services because we don't want to have just like a business spend a lot of working hours with a company or a client, and then that person just walks off the cliff and we never hear them again. Because our, we, get, we have metrics and we're monitored for the efforts that we do. So we have to encourage, we encourage companies to work with us, but we also have to make sure that we're doing, uh, maybe I'll let Jason talk about this a little better. No, that's good, Brent. You're right on that first point. It's important to separate the two resources. So step grants can reimburse export uh, development activities. Um, but when you come to us, there are fees for some of our services. I think this might be a good time to also mention the first step for a company like this that's already selling power tools and equipment and machinery. That's great. You have existing sales. Um, before you get into the really focusing too soon on the gold key service, um, you might want to 
just have a broader export counseling conversation with us. You complete a company questionnaire, you document all that information. That's a touchstone for us to begin to work with our partners overseas. And we start to get an idea of what foreign market might you have a competitive advantage in. And so before you get to the gold key service, you might think to yourself, well, I need that initial market check to find out if I could, you know, you, you don't want to go to try to find a partner in Brazil if you haven't done a market check or have a reason to know that you could even enter the market in Brazil. On the other hand, you may have regional expertise. You might know absolutely Brazil is a good market and you just want to find one particular partner or distributor. Maybe even you're looking to a buyer, whatever that might be. And so, you know, it's it's case by case basis. Sometimes you can have the company questionnaire completed, go straight to a gold key service. But oftentimes it takes a little bit more of a process where you're doing some counseling, maybe a market check, doing a background uh, uh, profile on a potential partner you're thinking about. But ultimately, the gold key service is a great uh, feature that we have. Sometimes I think its brand is better than us at the U.S. Commercial Service. Um, but I would again, I just would maybe repeat: begin with a company questionnaire, and then we could take it from there. Okay, thank you. Um, are these um, the step grant funds? Are they tax exempt, or it's regular income? When you receive the grant, not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, what's a good question? I'll share a link in the web uh, in the chat here on step grant info, but I don't have the answer on that one either. Okay. Any more questions, ladies? Yes, I do see one, but I'm I'm not sure how to answer it. What are the costs associate, associated? with helping us build our website. And I think that would just depend on your quotes, but I'm not sure what if, what they meant. I think they were asking if we would help build a company okay. to pay for a company's website development. Oh, awesome, thank you. Yeah, that's not what we do um, as an organ organization. What we do is we help analyze a company's current website and then we offer suggestions to help make it more export ready. But we don't as a team organization actually help build a website because that's just, that's, uh, that's not really in our purvey, but. I, I do believe that part of the step grant, the funds can go towards um, creating that website where you can buy off of it or the language is in whatever country you're, you know, trying to work with. They had a component. Bill sure. So this, yeah, I just want to re reinforce something. The step grant, that's the state of Texas. Right. And they, what they offer for the export activities. Hey, you use our website globalization report mm -hmm. and do a hundred dollars, which that's what it costs. That can be deducted and added to the step grants. But when it comes to website development, I, I really can't speak for step when it comes to that. Okay. Here's a question. How does exporting assist with COGS for transportation fleet and construction materials? Cost of goods sold. I'll take that, Jason. So that's not, I just want to get, uh, uh, knock off maybe a few mis- uh, that's not what we do. The U.S. Commercial Service doesn't reimburse or help finance business cost. So that business development will obviously be an internal cost that you'll have to, whether it's trying to find your net profit, gross profit, those are all internal decisions. Now, the SBA and their other organizations that can help provide you some type of financial guidance, but I don't want you, I don't want to mistake our or speak or the wrong impression that the U.S. Commercial Service will help pay for those costs. Okay, um, this is from Alana Cook. Is there any mentoring classes for CFG registration? What CFG, what that means? That's a good question. I'm not sure. And the person who asked that question, type what CFG is in the chat, please. Okay, we'll just move on. 
Yes, we're going to get a copy of the PowerPoint. And we're waiting on that. I think it's, 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 have all the questions been asked and yeah. answered? Yeah, the rest of thank you for clarification. Thank you. You know, I think I see one question in here about cost of trade missions. Um, I'll just mention, you know, we annually, we have many, many trade missions. I put, I put a link in the chat there if anyone wants to check that out. Um, it is a competitive process, right? We want to make sure that your company's export ready, that you have a product or service that's in demand for wherever that market is that we're traveling. Could be Africa, Asia, wherever it might be. But I would encourage all of uh, the businesses and the business leaders on the call to take a look at the schedule for our trade missions and consider applying. There's a cost. Uh, it changes on a case-by-case -case basis, but it's normally, um, let's see if I can find an example, about, um, let's see, 3000 for small uh, business, maybe $4,000 for medium-sized business, approximately. Again, that changes on a case-by-case -case basis, but that covers just the fees itself to, um, I'll use our trade mission last year to Bangkok, Thailand in the Ajahn region. So that would be what it would cost for a three-day program in a primary market, in this case, Bangkok, Thailand last year. Um, but then there could be mission stops in Vietnam, Singapore, uh, you know, Malaysia, other parts of the region that might be more relevant to your business. So you could do the main stop of a trade mission, do a spinoff stop. But we have many trade missions throughout the year uh, around the world. And I would consider, you know, encourage you all to take a look at that as well. And so, Jason, having said that, so if one of our attendees was just interested in attending a trade mission, not necessarily to uh, export, what's the cost for that individual? Or is it still about the same 3000 It's still the same. And, you know, that person would have to really think about the cost benefit analysis of that sort of participation. Um, you know, I would say if it's just to participate and you're not necessarily going to enter the market, remember, you're competing against companies from across the country. And so there's a chance that someone uh, in that position could be determined to be not export ready or not quite a fit for the market. Because what we want to do, and once we get into market, is have business to business matchmaking meetings, maybe business to government meetings with decision makers. So we want to make sure, make sure we're bringing a delegation of U.S. companies that have goods and services ready to sell. Okay. Yep. Okay. And uh, Ms. Alana Cook clarified her question. It pertains to the export of medical devices that can be legally marketed in the United States that are in compliance with the requirements of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. So it almost looks like an import dynamic. So if it's uh, legally marketed in the United States. Remember, we're no, we, we don't want to, uh, we recognize the importance of imports. They come into our country as goods and services everyone needs. Um, but that's not the assistance that we provide. So I'm not sure about that. Um, Brent, do you have any insight on that? Yeah, this, these, these type of questions are really going to be helpful. And that's why I encourage you to reach out to Marchette and her team, the Small Business Development Centers, SBDCs, and SCORE. Because um, whether it's, we you know, we can't assist on anything when it comes to the importation, but for instance, the FDA, this is something where a local, one of our counselors can help you with, not us, the U.S. Commercial Service, but like, for instance, SCORE, you tell this to one of their, you get one of the counselors, you can ask these questions to get guidance, but we don't really work on we're not the FDA either. So when it comes to licensing, that's something that you would have to work with. If that's a domestic issue, you'd have to work with a local counselor to help you guide you through these questions. Okay. Uh, so how do we know which American products are in need in other countries? Jump in on that one. I just saw it come in a moment ago. It's a great opportunity to plug our our country commercial guides one more time. That's a free resource. I put that link in there already. And what that will include is uh, local business practices, uh, re regulations, requirements, importing uh, into that country, for example, or exporting to that country rather, but also market opportunities, key sectors. So 
we won't get so granular, granular as to tell you exactly which product or service in particular would be sold in Mexico or Brazil or France or somewhere else, but you'll see what are the key sectors of growth, what are the opportunities for U.S. companies, and we have these country commercial guides for um, uh, foreign markets around the world. It's one of our greatest resources, if not the best one we have. It's free. And uh, take a look at market opportunities for country commercial guides, and you'll get some information there on what the opportunities are. Well, thank you so much, Jason and Brent. This was absolutely wonderful. Um, you have quite a, a large audience here. I know you all can't see, uh, Jessica and I can. So uh, thank you all so much for uh, all of your questions and thank you for attending this morning. We do appreciate your time. Uh, again, I think Brent put his um, email in the chat and that is brent.klepco at trade.gov. Uh, so please reach out to him with any questions you may have. He is certainly available and their information is also still on the screen. So thank you everybody for attending this morning and a certain, I mean, a big thank you to uh, both Jason and Brent.